Hi, I'm Kate Child. And I'm Bob Mooney. And this is Spoke TV, your source for local and campus news. An ammonia gas leak called in firefighters from Conestoga's pre-service firefighting program Tuesday morning. The mock disaster exercise taught students about situations they may have to deal with in the real world. Fair Love brings us to the scene of the disaster. Where there's smoke, there's fire, or in some cases, a mock disaster. Conestoga College's second year pre-service firefighting students took part in one of the largest to date mock disasters at the rec center located beside the college. Victoria Osmond was a student assigned to speak to the media on the day's event. We had an ammonia leak at the rec center at Conestoga College. We got dispatched at nine th around 9.30. Um, we arrived on scene and it was we did confirm it was ammonia leak. Um, since then, it has been stopped and uh, fixed. The disaster was set to mimic that of an ammonia leak, engaging over 90 students, all with assigned roles and duties to ensure the event runs smoothly. This was considered a hazmat emergency, which stands for hazardous material. The rain took a toll on today's events. It, it's, um, it's a really rainy day, so it's something that's brand new to all of us. We've never really worked in this type of environment. Steve Strongman filled us in on some unrealistic factors of the day. It's a busy campus area, so there's a lot of traffic. Normally in a situation like this, all that traffic would be blocked off. There wouldn't be any, uh, there wouldn't be any pedestrian traffic around. That would all be blocked off as well. In this competitive program, the students range from 18 to 42, most with previous skills, life, or volunteer experiences. Over 96 pre-service firefighting students just completed the mock disaster all having their own important and crucial role to the day's events. So if you heard any sirens, saw smoke, or saw any fire trucks, do not be alarmed. For Spoke TV, I'm Farrah Love. Susan Sarandon was in town last week at the 6th Annual Grand River Film Festival. The festival showcased small market films trying to get into a larger market. Stephen Ward rubbed shoulders with the stars and directors. We're here at Empire Theatres. It's playing host to the 6th Annual Grand River Film Festival. Now, not as big as some film festivals, such as the Toronto International Film Festival, it still allows small market talent to get exposure in a bigger market such as this. This year's festival has been the most successful so far with the star power of Oscar-winning actress Susan Sarandon, who spoke of the importance of film festivals like this. It's really great that you have a festival because this is where a lot of people get their films seen and then when people like it, it makes people want to trust that they're good and show them other places. So. We spoke with this year's feature film winner, Candice Markell. She explains why small film festivals like this are so important. Uh, festivals like this are fantastic. Uh, first of all, the exposure, um, which is great. Programmers come out, um, you know, to, to watch and, you, you know, follow up for subsequent festivals or networks, museums, things like that. Uh, not only that, but when they're um, a sort of, uh, what's the word, Pr promotional as this festival, uh, I think it's it's ideal because then you have uh, youth groups coming. Theater manager Christopher Vercal describes the role Empire Theater has played with this year's festival. This is the second year I've worked with uh, Tamara and the Grand River Film Festival. Uh, basically we house the project. Last year we had some of it, this year we have all of it uh, minus the short shorts and the Canterbridgeans. Uh, so they come in and we offer the theaters and we um, put the shows on. At the 6th annual Grand River Film Festival for Spoke TV, I'm Stephen Ward. The first fully funded BMX park in Ontario is opening at Riverside in Cambridge next year. The park addresses the overcrowding of riders using the Kitchener Auditorium. Spoke TV's Nicole Picton gets reactions to the park. The city of Cambridge is building a new bike park of dirt jumps in Riverside. For many years, the Kitchener Auditorium was the only place skaters and BMXers could go causing a lot of congestion. Longtime BMXer Mark Bowen says that this new park might relieve some of the crowding. Probably where I see the congestion being released the most is the fact that four years ago all they had was the auditorium right here, the Kitchener Auditorium, and everybody rode there. And the scene kind of, you know, people didn't really have a place to go, especially like the skateboarders and stuff. As you can see, some are really excited about the new bike park. On the other hand, some, like Braden Bygrave, think it's in the wrong location. Oh yeah, so um basically like I don't know, like I think it it's going to be better, but then it cannot be better cuz like what if someone wants to go to the dirt jumps like a uh, BMX wants to go to the dirt jumps and they come over and then they get the skate park dirty. So then the skaters going to be mad or someone's going to get mad, so that's what I was scared of. Riverside was open for a sneak peek earlier this month. 
Phase 1 is complete and the BMX park will be fully functional spring 2013. This $150,000 park is the first in the Tri-Cities to be funded by the province. For Spoke TV, I'm Nicole Picton. Kitchener-Waterloo United Way launched its campaign earlier this month with a goal of raising $50,000 in just two weeks. Patricia Lico investigates where the money goes. Conestoga's 2012 United Way fundraising campaign kicked off October 17th with a goal to raise $50,000 in two weeks. So the main way that we raise funds is through pledges and donations by employees. Um, and we also have a uh, variety of activities that we run. We have an employee bingo, we sell chocolates, and we do, uh, this year for the first time, we did a chili cook-off. The Kitchener-Waterloo United Way is the community's largest non-governmental organization to fund social service programs. So where exactly does the money go? One example is Mary's Place, an emergency shelter that provides basic necessities for homeless women and families in the region. United Way is a really big part of our budget. It helps to provide us with staffing, with the day-to-day -day needs of the residents, with some of our food costs. Um, it's, it is about 20% uh, of our, our budget, so it's a, it's a very large chunk of our budget. Um, and without United Way, we would very much struggle. The unemployment rate has been declining since 2010, but the percentage of families in Waterloo Region classified as working poor is slowly growing. These families make up almost 6% of the community. United Way funds a variety of programs to help people at various stages of poverty and gives them the chance to become self-sufficient and start new lives. For Spoke TV, I'm Patricia Lico. There was an intense atmosphere for women attending the Tri-City Roller Girls Derby this past Saturday. Taking place in New Hamburg, it was a thrilling tournament with some of the proceeds going towards Kitchener-Waterloo Humane Society. Spoke TV's Daryl Vandenberg brings us to the action. Crashes, bashes and rough gameplay took place on the flat track at the New Hamburg Arena Saturday night. The Tri-City Roller Girls took to the track showing the audience what they can do. Amateur team. The Tri-City Kitties took on the Niagara Puppies, while Tri-City Thunder took on New York's Lake Effect Furies, where there was more professional gameplay, including star player Motorhead Molly. My league created um, these Motorhead Molly t-shirts to help raise money for me to participate on Team Canada for Roller Derby. Um, the amount of money they raised helped me go out to Montreal for team practices before the actual World Cup. The game included a lot of strategy and tough referee calls. Coach Guillotine of Lake Effect Furies explains. Oh, it's definitely the hardest sport I've ever refed. I refed uh, hockey as well as softball before I joined roller derby, and this is way harder because it's chaos. The Humane Society was the roller derby's pick this year as a charity to showcase. This event is important on two fronts. First, it raises much needed funds for our animal care programs. And secondly, it brings us to the awareness of more than 250 people. In the end, both the Tri-City Kitties and the Tri-City Thunders won their matches. Next Saturday will be the closing match to end the season. For Spoke TV, I'm Daryl Vandenberg. Zombies recently gathered to creep the streets of downtown Waterloo. The undead brought canned food to support the charity Nutrition for Learning. Camilla Rivero braves the streets to tell us about this annual Waterloo zombie walk. Rain and wind did not stop these zombies from their haunted walk. The undead still stumbled down the streets of Waterloo, hungry for brains. The event was organized by KDOT.ca as a fundraiser for the Nutrition for Learning organization. It welcomed people of all ages and experience levels. People came for the love of zombies or simply to celebrate the holiday. We just really enjoy Halloween, so we thought it would be a great thing for the whole family. So as my daughter and my husband behind us, so just a fun, it's a family event. <laughs> Everybody had different ways of getting into character. When I was leaving, I pretended to eat my mommy's brain. And some were there for the more philosophical view of the undead. I really enjoy the whole idea that like, are zombies people? Are they, like it makes you question uh, humanity and life. There was a group of people that did not put on their zombie makeup. Community Development Officer Brian Banks was there for a different reason. Okay, Nutrition for Learning, our mandate, our mission is to 
and sure everybody has the ability to learn by making sure they're well nourished for the day. We have about 9,000 students across Waterloo Region that will reach out into one of our food bins or breakfast programs on a daily basis. Participants at the Zombie Walk were encouraged to donate food or money at the booth. Some of the head organizers or head zombies are personal friends and relatives and uh, when they first talked about this and they go, you know what, we want to tie into a charity, let's do it for you. And of course we ate that first thought, hmm, but I'll tell you, you know, feeding on brains to feed brains, we thought that was a good idea. For Spoke TV, I'm Camilla Rivero. And that's all we have for this week. I'm Kay Childs. And I'm Bob Mooney. Thanks for tuning in. For more information, check out SpokeOnline.com.